Good morning. Great to have you all here for worship this morning in our warm sanctuary, right? Uh, it certainly feels like winter, and if it feels like winter, Christmas must be right around the corner. So, what we have for you today is not only just our normal announcement sheet, but we have two handouts that we're going to look over. The first, you, will, you were not handed this as you walked in today, but this handout can be found on the far table in the Zion Cafe, almost as if you're heading into our school building. This is the reverse Advent calendar. So this is a list of goods corresponding with a date in Advent that will go towards our food pantry. So for example, December 1st, can of corn, December 2nd, box of stuffing mix, so on and so forth. So each day, there's a donation being made to our food pantry. Again, this handout is found on a table in the Zion Cafe as, uh, just before you get to our school doors, and there's brown paper bags there as well, so we would love for you to participate in that. The giving tree right in the corner still stands with plenty of ornaments on it. Each tag has boy or girl and then an age, uh, and then you will go get a gift that corresponds with that tag, and those gifts are due by December the 11th, unwrapped. Unwrapped gifts by December the 11th. They'll be picked up on December the 14th. Okay, now to this sheet. <clears throat> Actually, before we get to this sheet, just so everybody knows and is aware, this coming Thursday is Thanksgiving. Okay? Everybody aware of that? Not surprising anybody? So we have two opportunities for Thanksgiving worship. First on Wednesday night at 7 o'clock, and then Thanksgiving morning at 9.30. Both will be the same service. Both will have communion. So you're welcome to join us for Thanksgiving worship. Then we go to this sheet. Next Sunday is the first Sunday in Advent. So we're kicking off Advent next Sunday, which means Wednesday, November the 30th, is our first Wednesday Advent service. So the Wednesdays in Advent are different services than the Sunday services that we'll have here in worship. So as we prepare for the birth of our Savior, we have special services uh, on the theme, What Child Is This? will be our theme for Wednesdays. And then as you look uh, kind of the print underneath each date, you'll see the significant things that are happening in terms of like our Sunday School Christmas program coming up on Sunday, December the 18th. That same day, we're going to have our live nativity after our 930 worship. This coming Sunday, we're decorating our sanctuary after our 9.30 worship. We'd love to have you stick around for that. All of those special events and, and things that go along with Advent and Christmas can be found on this sheet in front of you. Take this home with you, stick it on the fridge, and you'll have everything that you need for the Christmas season here at Zion Wayside. Once again, so great to have you in worship with us today as we wrap up our sermon series and our small group series on being Lutheran. That will be the focus of our sermon here today. And as we begin worship, I invite the congregation to please stand as we open with a word of prayer. 
Lord God, Heavenly Father, what a blessing it is to be gathered here together with those who are united with us in the faith. We are approaching Thanksgiving, and we are so thankful for you each and every single day for the blessing that your church is to us. We thank you for gathering us here today to hear your word. Bless us that we may learn more about you, more about ourselves, and more about our neighbor and how we can serve them as well. Be with us as we receive the gift of the sacrament this day, and we pray that you would work through those means for the good of your people. And now at this time, Heavenly Father, grant us your spirit that we may grow in faith. And we pray this in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We join in singing our opening song, Indescribable. Old Testament reading this morning, we're going to hear God speak to Abraham, and he's going to tell Abraham of the blessings that he is going to bestow upon him, that he will make his name great. But he also tells him the reason that he is doing that. 
I will bless you. I will make your name great so that you will be a blessing. As we think about the blessings which God has bestowed upon us, are we sharing them? Are we satisfied? So many times we think of the blessings which God has given to us, and yet we think, I could use a little more. And we're not satisfied. And we're left thinking, boy, this isn't enough. Sometimes we think about the blessings which God has given to us, and we crave more. And that which we do have, we simply keep to ourselves. We think about ourselves rather than thinking about has, how God has blessed us to be a blessing to others. As we confess our sins before God our Father at this time, let us silently in our hearts and in our minds confess of the ways which we have been selfish with the blessings that God has given to us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God continues to bless us with everything that we need to support this body and life. But he also blesses us that we can be a blessing to others. And he has sent us the ultimate blessing in the form of his son, our Savior, Jesus. That he has forgiven us all of our sins. He gives us the gift of his spirit that we may be inspired to see the needs of our neighbor and love them and serve them just as he served us. And so as we are gathered here this day, I as a called and ordained servant of Christ and by his authority forgive you of all of your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Congregation may be seated at this time and I would like to invite our young ones forward for a children's message just for you. So come on up, grab a seat. We'll gather right up here. And we have plenty of room because I know there are a lot of you out there today, which is fantastic. It is great to have all of you here with us. Some of you are even coming from upstairs, which is great. All right. Thank you all for being up here this morning and being here for worship. There's a very special day coming up next week. It's a national holiday. And some of you may even have, you're raising your hands already. You, you already know what I'm going to ask you. What day is coming up next week? Yeah. Christmas is down the line. You're right. Christmas is coming up, and we're thinking about Christmas. Advent is right around the corner. We're thinking about Christmas. But there's a day that's coming up that's even before Christmas. What day is that? Yeah, Thanksgiving. Thanksgiving is coming up on Thursday. And on Thanksgiving, maybe you have this tradition in your family where you go around the table and you say something that you're thankful for. I thought we could do that today. What's something that you're thankful for? Yeah. Your family, of course. Yep. What else are you thankful for? Friends. Yep. All of those people are very special people. Yes. Yeah. So what else are you thankful for? Yourself. Yeah. Your being. Yeah. Your being here. Of course. You should be thankful for the health that God has given to you. Yeah. Very good. What else? Your house, yep. Shelter, it'd be pretty cold outside your house right now. Yep, we're thankful for that. What are you thankful for? For me? Well, thank you very much. And I'm thankful for you too. A couple more. For school, how about that? Thankful for school, wonderful. Yes, okay. Thankful for Jesus. Yeah, of course we'll, we're thankful for Jesus. He's the greatest blessing we get. Okay, last two right here. Food, yeah. Thanksgiving is a great day to be thankful for food. Yep. And last one? Life, of course. What a great blessing that is. Okay, last one here. 
that you have one more one more everyone in the whole entire world wonderful yes all of these things are things that we should be thankful for have you ever thought about who are we saying thank you to if thanksgiving is a, is a national holiday where everyone talks about what they're giving thanks for well well who are we saying thank you to yeah yeah, God, we're saying thank you to God. We're saying thank you to Jesus for all of the blessings which they have given to us. I want you to do something special this year. When you're thinking about all the things that you're thankful for, or if you're sitting at the dinner table and everyone's going around and, and saying what they're thankful for, just like we did here today, I want you to also think about how can I share that with other people? Those things that we're thankful for, how can I share those gifts with the people around me? Maybe you can even go to your parents and ask, how can, we, how can we share the blessings which God has given to us with those people around us? Because there are people around us who don't have the same things that we do and people that need the things that we have to share with them. So this Thanksgiving, I want you to think about how you can share with other people. Do any of you have any ideas? How can we share with other people? Yeah. Absolutely. That's the greatest thing we can do. We can, we can share the message of Jesus with other, other people. How else can we share? How else can we share? Yep. How can we share? Do you know? Anyone else have an idea? Yeah, you can help people when they fall down. You can help people um, when they don't have the school supplies that you have and share with them. Yeah, last one. Yeah, so you guys did Operation Christmas Child. That's a great way to share with people. You have a good one? Okay, let's hear it. You can go to people's house. Yeah, you can do that and, and share with people that way. So this Thanksgiving, remember two things. Who we're saying thankful to, Thanksgiving to, and who are we saying thanks to? Do you know? God. Yeah, God. Yeah, we're saying thank you to God and... We're sharing the gifts that God has given to us. So let's pray. So let's fold our hands and bow our heads. And you can repeat after me. And congregation, you can repeat after me as well. Dear God, Dear God thank you for blessing us that we can bless others. Be with us today and every day that we can share the gifts that you have given to us with all people. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right, thank you guys for being up here. Your Sunday school teachers are waiting for you in the back. A lively bunch today, which is fantastic. They're looking forward to that. And as we continue with worship here this morning, we continue with our readings. Our Old Testament reading is from Genesis chapter 12. Now the Lord said to Abram, Go from your country and your kindred, and your father's house, to the land I will show you. And I will make you, and I will make of you a great nation, and I will bless you and make your name great, so that you will be a blessing. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The epistle reading is from Acts chapter 2 when they devoted themselves to the apostles, teaching and the fellowship, the, to the breaking of bread and prayer, and awe came upon every soul, and many wonders and signs were being done through the apostles, and all who believed were together and had all things in common, and they were selling their possessions and belongings and distributing the proceeds to all as any had need. 
and day by day attending the temple together and breaking bread in their homes. They, re they received their food with glad and generous hearts, praising God with favor with all the people. And the Lord added to their number day by day those who were being saved. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please stand for the reading of the Holy Gospel. And our gospel reading this morning comes from the first chapter of Mark. Passing alongside the Sea of Galilee, he saw Simon and Andrew, the brother of Simon, casting a net into the sea, for they were fishermen. And Jesus said to them, Follow me, and I will make you become fishers of men. And immediately they left their nets and followed him. And going on a little farther, he saw James, the son of Zebedee, and John, his brother, who were in their boat mending the nets. And immediately he called them, and they left their father Zebedee in the boat with the hired servants and followed him. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We will remain standing as we join in singing our song of the day, Build My Life. Every song. 
grace, mercy, and peace to you from God our Father and our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. You may be seated. So this is it, the grand finale, as we read together the book Being Lutheran, chapters 9 and 10 today. The goal is to bring everything full circle. And after the doozy of a chapter that the chapter 8 was, I think we're ready for that, right? Uh, I've heard so many wonderful comments as we've read this book together, and I've heard from both ends of the spectrum. I've heard from people who've been Lutheran for 80 plus years, their entire lives, um, and, and they've said the same thing. While we've been hearing these concepts before, and, and I'm aware of the doctrines that we have here, I kind of have a new perspective on certain things. It's been really enjoyable to read and discuss this book together. I've also heard from people who are pretty new to this whole being Lutheran thing, and they've said how wonderful it is to learn about our history, to know who Martin Luther is, and of course to know more about what we believe in and how we might be different than churches I belonged to in the past and things like that. Those are all wonderful things. And believe me, this isn't the end of us talking about our Lutheran heritage or, or learning more about what we confess to be true here in the Lutheran Church, Missouri Synod. We're, we're always going to be doing those things. It is important for us to have that mental understanding of what it means to be Lutheran. But, as we've talked about from the very beginning of this book, it is about being. It's about being Lutheran. And so today we're going to talk about vocations. We're going to talk about how we be Lutheran, how we be Christian, be a disciple, a follower of Jesus in all of the vocations that we have in our incredibly busy and hectic lives. Vocation is really just a fancy church word that means the roles that you have in your life. One way to think about the vocations that you have is to, to think of how you introduce yourself to someone for the first time, or the questions that you ask someone when you're meeting them for the first time. A lot of times the first question asked is, so what do you do for a living? Or you introduce yourself and you say, hi, I'm so-and-so and I do, and you state your profession. That is a vocation that you have. That is what you do for a living. Or you're at a party and you're at a party with your parents. Maybe you're celebrating their anniversary, something like that. Or, or you meet someone for the first time at this party. You introduce yourself and you say, hi, I'm the son of or the daughter of. That's a vocation that you have as a child of your parents. Or you're at your children's school event athletic event, school party, classroom party, something like that. You introduce yourself to someone for the first time and you say, hi, I'm the mother of or the father of. That's a vocation that you have. All of these roles that you have in your family, at work, um, in your leisure time, all of those roles are your vocations. And what we're talking about today is that we are called to have Christ at the center of all of those vocations. To look to Jesus in all of those vocations. Just as the disciples did in our gospel reading today, they had the vocation of fishermen. And they were tending to their nets, they were out doing their job, and Jesus spoke to them and said, follow me, and I will make you fishers of men. And what do they do? I love how the gospel writer said this, Mark, immediately, they didn't waste any time, immediately they dropped what they were doing and they followed Jesus. Jesus was at the center of all that they did. Such is the same for us. A lot of people look to pastors and principals and teachers and DCEs and all of the church workers, deacons, deaconesses, all of the church workers, and they look to them and they say, they're the ones that do ministry. They are the ones that'll handle everything that I need, handle everything that my family needs in terms of religion, in terms of church, in terms of faith. They'll handle all of that. 
I'll concentrate on my job, and my family, and things like that. That's partially true. We do do ministry here at Zion Wayside, both in our church and our school. But let's talk about why. Why do we gather here to hear God's word? Why do we gather here to receive the sacrament? Why do we send our children to a Lutheran school? Why did my parents send me to a Lutheran school? We do ministry here in the church so that the members of the congregation may be equipped with the word of God, nurtured in their faith, that they may leave this building and go out and be ministers in each of their vocations. We do ministry in our school and teach people about Jesus so that they may be equipped in faith for their future vocations, that our school families would be equipped for their current vocations. We do ministry here in this place that you all may go out and have Jesus at the center of your life in all of the different things that you do on a daily basis, that you may witness to people about Jesus through your words and through your deeds and how you live in general in all of the vocations that you have in your life today. And now, if I'm being totally honest with you, even as, as I do ministry here, even as our staff does ministry here, there are times where your role in doing ministry is actually more difficult. Think about it this way. I do ministry in that I come here and I preach to people who are here because they want to be. They want me to preach. At least I think that's the case. <laughs> right? I'm preaching to a group of people that wants to hear it, wants to receive it. We gather here today and, and we read the Bible here to people that desire to hear God's word. They want to hear more. They want to learn more. We gather here and we talk about Jesus freely. And we express that our faith is our number one priority, that God is our top priority. And we're all on the same page in that. You all go do ministry at work, in the office, on the farm, on the road, at the hospital, in whatever way that you work. In each vocation that you have, you're doing ministry in a totally different setting. And sometimes you're doing ministry in a place and talking about God in a place where not everyone thinks the same way that you do. Sometimes you talk about Jesus in a place where people might not even know who he is. Sometimes you stand firm uh, in the morals that God's word has provided for you. And people might be offended by that. Sometimes you talk about faith and people might even argue against you and challenge you on your faith. Ministry isn't always easy. But that's why it is so important for us to be here so that we might be equipped and ready for those moments. But as we think about the many vocations that we have, and, and there's a lot, right? Life is busy. Life is hectic. You look at the calendar and there's something for every single day for multiple vocations that you have in your life. It all starts at home. Okay? It all starts at home. Your vocation as father, as mother, as son or daughter, grandparent, whatever role that you have, it is the, of the utmost importance that you are nurturing the faith of those in your family. It all starts at home. It is so important that we in our homes, our Christian homes, build the foundation in Jesus that the coming generations may share that same foundation in having a Christian 
world view. That as they look around in their surroundings and they see the things that the unexpected happens, or the tragedy strikes, or just quite simply as they grow up and just begin to ask questions and curiosity becomes more and more of a thing, that they already have that foundation built. Jesus, Jesus is at the center of my life. Jesus is the answer for when things go poorly. I'm giving thanks to God when things are going great. It is so vitally important that our homes are a place where we are strengthening and reinforcing everything that we hear and receive here. Yes, that even means if you send your children to a Lutheran or Christian school, that you are reinforcing regularly everything that they are taught in the classroom. Parents have the greatest impact on the formation of their children, the greatest impact on the lives of their children. Sometimes we might think it's their pastor. It's not. Sometimes we might think it's their teacher, that they'll handle it. It's not. We'll certainly help. That's why we're here. But parents, you have the greatest impact on your child's life and your child's life moving forward. Talk about God. Talk about the Bible. Talk about Jesus. Pray. Pray with them. Teach them about what prayer is. Reinforce everything that we're taught here and that we hear about here so that they can move forward with a Christian worldview and see Jesus as the center of their lives. That they may have the same Christian values that we have moving forward. Those values that we stand firm on. Because the world is going to continue to throw us different values. Things that change. God's word never changes. And that is where we build our foundation. We think about the lives of the disciples. Jesus called out to them and said, follow me. And they did. And did that mean that their lives became easier as a result of that? No, it didn't. Actually, in, in several ways, it became more challenging. There were more questions. There was more confrontation. Yet God sustained them in their faith that they may continue to look to Jesus. The disciples were sinners, just like you and me. They did things that they should not have done. And they said things that they should not have said. And, and as a result of their own actions, there were consequences for them. And there were troubles that they brought upon themselves. God gives them forgiveness. God sustains them in their faith that they may continue to look to Jesus above all things. We continue to look to Jesus in all things. Being here at Zion Wayside is an incredible blessing. And over the past, well really, so for our school, 150 years, and for our church, 160 years, God has made it very apparent the blessings of our labor here in this place. God continues to bless us that we may be a blessing to others as we just talked about. You all are doing an incredible job. You all are taking your roles as Christians very seriously. And I can see that. And I know that you all can see that as well. Over the past few years, we have, and frankly, an astonishing number of people step into this place for the very first time. We've had an astonishing number of people step into our school building for the very first time. And when people enter into our building for the first time, they don't just walk in, sit down, and leave, and no one notices them. It's the opposite. They are greeted with a smile, and then another smile, and then another smile, and it just keeps going. They are greeted by people who genuinely and authentically want to know them want to get to know you so that we may be of service to you. 
so that we can help you get to know the area better, so that we can help you uh, learn who people are and, and get, to, get to know friends and, and family, that we might help you in any aspects of your life, that we might be able to support you with anything that you might have questions about or any needs that might come up, whether they be expected or unexpected. We are a congregation that has been moved by the Spirit to truly care for others. And I want to say thank you to you for that. This place continues to grow because God is at work through people like you. You are doing ministry. Keep it up. Keep it up. Words of encouragement to continue to be that beacon of light in the world around us. I want to close with this uh, as we wrap up being Lutheran. There's one other thing that is really at the core of, of the Lutheran Church Missouri Synod that, that we speak so strongly about, and that is this, worship. It is imperative, it is of the utmost importance that you regularly find yourself and your family here in worship on Wednesday nights at 7 or on Sunday mornings at 7.45 and 9.30 so that we are equipped to do what we just talked about doing. So that we are equipped to live a Christ-centered life in all of the vocations that we have. It is here in this place that God speaks to us. He speaks to us through his word individually that we might learn more about ourselves and together as the church that we might see our neighbor and see how we together might go out and serve and love others. It is here in this place that God gives us the gifts of his sacrament, that, that people are baptized and welcomed into God's family, given the gift of faith, their sins forgiven. It's here in this place that we receive Jesus' true body and true blood given and shed for you that your sins are forgiven. That happens here in this place, and God works through those means. You may come here feeling a certain way and leave feeling the exact same way. You may not physically feel a difference having received the gifts that God has given to you. You may not fully comprehend how God works through these means that he gives to us. But I'll tell you this, God made a promise. And when God makes a promise, he keeps that promise. And he keeps that promise above and beyond any expectation that we could possibly have. God promised to forgive your sins through those means. God promised to sustain you and give you faith through those means. He does it. And he does it here in this place. And he does it so that we may have Jesus at the center of our lives. This has been a theme. It's been a theme for our entire study and being Lutheran. It's all about Jesus. It's always been about Jesus. It's about Jesus today. And it always will be about Jesus. And so it is our continued prayer that God continues to equip us that we may go out into this world and tell more people about Jesus so that they may see the love that he has for them through us. In Jesus' name, amen. At this time, I invite the congregation to please stand as we together confess the one true faith using the words of the Nicene Creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth.
At this time, I invite the offerings to be brought forward. And as we approach Thanksgiving, we are so thankful for you and the contributions that you make to support our ministry in both church and school. Uh, just so you all know, the, the gifts that you give to us here at Zion Wayside also go out to supporting other areas of ministry, other uh, entities like Camp Luther or NEW, um, and we are going to promote those, those ways in which we together tithe as a congregation to support ministries in other areas as well. So again, as always, thank you for your gifts uh, given to us that we may continue to equip generations for life in Christ. And now let us pray for the whole church of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. Lord God, Heavenly Father, we give you thanks for the greatest blessing of all, that is your Son, our Savior Jesus Christ. We give you thanks for the love that you have shown to us by sending him to serve as a sacrifice on our behalf, that he died on the cross that our sins would be forgiven and rose from the dead three days later to conquer sin, death, and the devil. We give you thanks for giving that victory to us as well in Jesus' name. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, we ask your continued provision of your spirit to be with us, that we may go out into this world and, and all the different vocations that we have, all of the different and unique roles that we have in our lives, that we would be inspired by your spirit to have Christ at the center of all of them, and that we would be faithful witnesses to the love which he has shown to us, to the world around us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord God, Heavenly Father, we give you thanks for your continued provision for all that we need to support this body and life. We ask for your protection upon all of those who in this state are participating in the hunt at this time. And we pray, Heavenly Father, uh, that you would continue to bless us with, with bountiful goods. Uh, we continue to pray for the workers in your kingdom. And as you continue to provide for us, we give you thanks through the hands in which you provide for us. We give you thanks for all farmers and truck drivers. And we pray, Heavenly Father, that you would continue to bless them, that the world may be fed through their hands. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, we continue to lift up our congregation here at Zion Wayside, and especially our call committee, as we look to move forward in calling an associate pastor. We pray that you would continue to grant our committee wisdom as we continue this search and also be with our district of our synod as well as our seminaries as they continue to equip men for faithful service in your church. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, we come before you at this time lifting up those in our hearts and in our minds uh, whom we know are in need of your special care. We pray especially on behalf of Gail Bartelt, Bob Disher, Amanda Rossner, Jarrett Troy, Jeff Lupnow, Charmaine Rimple, Willow Van Vonderen, John Kiley, Darlene Gauger, Neil Zastro, Ed Byrne, Bev Kikafer, Bill Mullmans, Ron Tim, and Bill Krieger. Lord, we also lift up before you the family of Kathy Kupski and all of those in our midst who are mourning the loss of loved ones. We pray, Heavenly Father, that in moments of sorrow and mourning, you would Allow us to remember the promises which you have made to all of us in our baptism. That by your grace, we are saved through faith. And that we may look forward with joy and peace to the day which you have appointed where Jesus will return and bring resurrection and life for all eternity. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Almighty God, we pray that you would give us repentant hearts that we would eat and drink the body and blood of Jesus for the forgiveness of our sins and to proclaim joyfully his death until he comes again in glory. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. As the days pass and all things move to their appointed end, we pray that you would keep us from being complacent. Keep us alert and awake so that when the day comes, we may greet you and rejoice in your eternal salvation. And we pray this through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who has taught us to pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. 
thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, in the night in which he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. This do in remembrance of me. In the same way also, he took the cup after supper. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to his disciples and said, Take and drink of it, all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood shed for you for the forgiveness of all of your sins. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And now may the peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. You may be seated. table.
Please stand. And now may this, the true body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, strengthen and preserve you unto life everlasting. You may depart in peace and joy. Your sins are forgiven. Amen. And now receive with believing hearts the blessing of our Lord. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. By God's grace, we are equipping generations for life in Christ. Go in peace, serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. We'll remain standing as we join in singing our closing song, Our God. Worshiping with us today. God's blessings on your week.